Thank you. What an intro. I'm yes. Dennis. I'm Andrew. We are known as the Crafty Lumberjacks. We're coming to you live from Astoria, Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. um, we're excited to be here. Let us know. I'm going to be following along on the chat today. So you can let us know where you're from or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Hi from California. Hi, Laurel. And if Dennis isn't, if he's like working and he's not checking, we have Deja and Tia who are both going to be monitoring the chats and just, you know, answering any questions that they can as well. Yes, in today's class, we're gonna be turning our trash into treasure. Uh, we are making these DIY styrofoam stamps, really easy to make, and you could create just about anything. Yes, and today we, our theme is based on Hispanic Heritage Month, which starts September 15th and it goes through October 15th. And uh, it's personal to me because I am first generation Cuban American. So I like to take this month and really think about the culture that my family has uh, given me and learn more about it if I can. If you are celebrating as well, or if you come from uh, Hispanic heritage, you can let us know in a chat as well. Or if you just want to tell us where you're from in general, all heritage is beautiful. So we want to hear it. Let yes. And what a great opportunity that I love that they have these months where we get to celebrate each other because it gives you an opportunity to learn about other people. And I think, you know, the more we know about different people and the more different we are, the better we are as a whole. Definitely. That's why we, we live in Astoria, Queens. Queens is the most diverse area in the world. So we are surrounded by people from all over and we just love that aspect of it. So I agree. The more you know about other people, just the better off you are, right? Yes. Also in today's class, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Shout out to Fiskars for having us and Michaels for having us. We do the classes every month. So please join us again. Uh, this is one of the projects we're making for Halloween, a little vintage pumpkin pail that's going to be on October 9th. You can sign up, you get the information. Same deal, we'll be doing a giveaway and also teach you how to make this cute little vintage pumpkin. Yeah, so if you're wondering like, why are you surrounded by Halloween stuff right now? It's because we are getting ready for it all. So you're, you know, we like to live with the Halloween surroundings as long as we can. But in this giveaway, we are going to be giving away this uh, detailed craft knife, which is one of our favorite tools ever. Yes, we're actually gonna be giving away a lot of the, the uh, materials we're using today. Yes. We're gonna give away the small cutting mat, a bone folder, which is, oh, if you don't know what that is, we're gonna explain it. We'll have to edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> we're also giving away a silicone mat here. And of course, a pair of the OG Fiskar scissors. Uh, we do the giveaways at the end of the class, so you want to stay around. And the giveaway is only for the participants participating today in the live class. Yes. And it's only open to people in Canada and America. That's just for shipping reasons. <laughs> okay. All right. We're on a budget. We're on a budget. All right. <laughs> so let's get started. So we're going to be using a piece of styrofoam. This is a styrofoam I just let's have, we have uh, people in oh. Florida, oh. they're Cuban as well. Astoria, Emily, hello, thanks for joining us. Love Spooky Dookie, love giveaways. Uh, hello, Arizona, Orlando. We got everybody here today. I love that. Well, thank you all for coming today. That's really special and we're really glad that you're here. So we are going to be turning trash into treasure. We are using a Colorado. Styro Color oh, I love Colorado. <laughs> we love Colorado. We're going to use a, a styrofoam tray for this. So if you have a takeout container that's styrofoam, I always think of like those ones that are like, um, have like a lid on them. This is a perfect craft for you because these aren't great for the environment. So if you can upcycle them, all the better, you know? We live in a big apartment building. We asked our super, we live right next door to her. We asked her to save anything styrofoam she saw and she delivered. So we have an abundance of these styrofoam trays right now. Yes, and actually I think styrofoam is banned in New it's York. It's banned in New York. So we want to get that around the country. You yes, know? now if you do not have styrofoam, you can still make this craft using a craft foam that you can find at Michael's. The only difference is, uh, you're going to want to cut out each piece instead of tracing over each piece. I can go over that. If somebody is really wanting to know that, I can go over that as we go on. It'll make a little more sense than me trying to explain it now. We got uh, California in the house, uh, Indiana, East Elmhurst, Midwest, Missouri. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, okay. I think we're going to get started. Deja, if you don't mind flipping the camera. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Andrew's sorry. Gonna, sorry. I was he's just going to show. Our, he's got a prop. I got a he's prop. got a prop. I was going to show our inspiration for this project is this cafeteria right here. It's a espresso maker, an Italian espresso maker, a Cuban coffee maker, however you want to call it. A lot of different cultures center themselves around coffee. And when I think about my culture, I always think of coffee 
Um, so I thought this was a really great uh, just icon to do today. So this is kind of what we're basing our stamp off. Yeah, so what we did, we found an image online. We just uh, Googled uh, the coffee maker, yep. looked for it, found an image clip art, free clip art, downloaded it and sized it uh, for our stamp, printed it out on the computer. And we're gonna use this as a template to make our stamp. Yes, and our stamp is about, I don't know, about six inches uh, big. I think the bigger the stamp, you don't need to make it big, but I think uh, the bigger it is, it's a little easier to get those details. And when you're looking for an image, really try to think about simplicity. You don't need something really detailed because styrofoam isn't gonna capture all that. So if you can kind of have something that's nice and simple, you're golden. All yes. right. Now we're ready to flip the camera. Thank you, Deja. All right. All right, so we're gonna start with our, our tray here. So as you can see, uh, we have like these raised edges. We don't want that. So we're gonna use our craft blade and just kind of take that off so that we're working with a nice blank uh, piece of styrofoam. Coffee, yeah. coffee, coffee. I'm strong Cuban root. Yes, yeah. welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, what I like about the craft blade is that it's really precise and you can use different blades on it. You can actually take the yeah, blade Yeah, they have a quick off. release. So it's so really you can just do that, use. and then you could swap out. Sorry, you turn it. Oh, well, gosh. you don't need to. You don't need to swap okay, it out right now. So we need to. I need it. We got it. We got to keep this train moving. But it's really easy to swap <laughs> out, and they have different blades. So if your blade starts to get a little um, dull, don't worry. They have replacement blades, so you don't have to buy the whole thing, which is really great, and it's eco-friendly as well. Great. So now Dennis has the flat surface. You want to do mine as well? Sure. And we're also giving away this uh, cutting mat. This is great for small spaces. Um, it's It actually repairs itself. This one we've been using for years and years. We've had this one for so long. It's self-healing, which means if you make a cut, it'll just kind of, uh, it won't leave that indent in the mat. So you won't get like tripped up when you're cutting later. Does that make yes. sense? Yes, and I also love these products because they all come with a grid. Mm -hmm. So it makes it really easy to use if you're lining up like a fabric for quilting, or even crafting, um, you know, you can use the grid to your advantage. Here. I feel like we're always using this grid, which is really nice, you know, even just to like measure. We're always using or I'm always using. Oh, wow. Oh, the, the, shade, the shade, the shade. Dennis is more of the cutter. Oh, yes. In the family. In the family here. All right. All right. So now that we have our uh, styrofoam cut down and it's nice and flat, we're going to take our image that we printed online. And we're just gonna trace it. Of course, we like to use as much as we can here. So I'm gonna go up to a corner here and I'm gonna use a pencil. You can use a pen. You want your um, pencil or pen to be nice and dull because you do not want to um, rip the styrofoam. Thank you. And now, like Andrew said, you really don't want it to be um, that many details. So some of these detailed pieces, I'm gonna kind of omit as I'm tracing. So rather than kind of keeping these lines in or this top line, I'm just gonna go around that. And I'm just tracing and doing a light indent into the styrofoam as I make my way around the coffee maker here. Even here, I think I'm just gonna do like a triangle spout. And really, you know, the clip art is just to give you a guide, keep it easy for you. Yeah, you don't need to make clip art. You could even draw your image first and then trace it right on just like Dennis is doing. Uh, I don't know how you did this part, so I'm just gonna kind of wing it. Christine asks, where's the link of the of the of this image? You know, we don't have that uploaded. I could upload it to the blog. Don't you think, Dennis? Like right now? No, 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 not right now. I'm in the middle of a class right now. But okay, I could upload well. it to the blog and have it up there in a couple of days if you're really interested. Or you can just Google um espresso coffee makers, I think what I wrote, or espresso Cuban coffee maker, or Italian coffee maker, something like that. And what's great, we're gonna be making a pop print, uh, and we call it a pop print. It's kind of an Andy Warhol style, 3D kind of looking graphic, bold, colorful print. But of course you can make anything you want out of this once you have your stamp, you can do cards, you can use it in scrapbooking. Uh, said a stylus would also work for this step. You're, yes. See if you're so right, it would totally work for this step. So once you have your image traced there, oh, you oh, see great. there's like a little indent. Yeah, there you, you see. can see it. That looks great. Thank you. 
Yeah, stylus would work great on this. So you want to trace you want me to do there. Mine? We're kind of making two as we go along here. And actually, Tia, we're going to be using the bone folder. This is a, a bone folder. It's great for creasing and folding paper. We use this in a lot of uh, scrapbooking and card making. And actually, our nephew uses this a lot. Oh, and some people will be happy this is not made out of real bone. <laughs> this is, even though it's called, called a bone folder, it is uh, made out of plastic. Um, and our, co our cousin, our nephew Anderson, he's really into origami. So he actually has one, uh, one of these and he uses this to get really tight and uh, smooth creases when he's folding his intricate origami pieces. I don't even, I, I was never a good origami I'm maker. not a great origami maker either. Um, it's really great if you're doing cards, you really want a nice crease. You can't really get that with your thumb. So this really just takes those details over the top. It yes. has really nice smooth edges. So it doesn't rip the paper when it creases. Yes, it just and then with the lies. pointed tip, like you can get in corners there if you're working with something or even if you're um, kind of uh, taking fabric and doing it inside out, you know, when you do like a pillowcase or something like that. Oh. So you can kind of use this to poke, poke the corner there. And then we also use this with our clay making project. So we'll use it to cut the clay, to press down. Uh, but for this, I'm gonna use the bone folder and just go over the lines that I made with my pencil, just to make sure that the indent is nice. You know, I was a little worried that you wouldn't be able to see and um, deep. how this really uh, changes the whole uh, lineage. That's not real. Those aren't real. <laughs> That's not real. But, not uh, real. but you actually can even see it in the camera while you're doing that. You can really see that this really adds a crease that the pencil really doesn't add. And it's those details. You really want those, um, those creases because that's really going to help make your stamp pop. Yes. For our pop portrait, darling. Is everybody starting to decorate for Halloween already? Crafting for Christmas? What are you all working on currently? We'd love to hear from you. And of course, follow us on social media, Crafty Lumberjacks. And also all these classes that Michaels does, or they do, uh, they are they are on their YouTube channel. So if you miss anything, or if you want to revisit them, you could either go back to our blog post, or you can go to Michael's YouTube channel, and they'll post this video there too. And they have a wide variety of different videos with different techniques and crafting styles. We're on some of those videos, and some of our other friends are there. And of course, anytime you're making a project, please use the hashtag Make It With Michaels or Fiskars, um, because we want to see it. Uh, we totally do. Deja just shared a link of upcoming classes, which is really great. Michaels has classes for all skill levels every day, which is awesome. Thank you. Baseball t-shirt quilt. Yes, love that. Someone said crocheting pumpkins. Oh my gosh, yes, that's so cool. Fall themed, love that. Everybody's getting ready for fall. We're so ready. We are so ready. Are it snuck up on us, though, to it be really honest. Did. It really did. Okay, are Andrew's getting... just working on his stamp here now. Okay, I'm going to do Is really anybody quickly. crafting along with us today? Corn maze. Oh, Ooh, I love what? all the fall activities. So fun. Oh, I thought someone was making a corn My maze. hocus pocus decorating spooky bedroom. Ooh, Ooh. sisters. We fly. That sounds I would fun. be the Kathy and Jimmy, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right, let me see. Okay, mine looks pretty. I'm trying to do mine very Drying quickly. flowers for wreaths. Oh, I love dried flowers. Oh, that's really pretty. T-shirt quilt. Awesome. I do that as well. I love a t-shirt quilt. You know, I used to do a lot of theater when I was growing up, so I would get all my uh, play shirts. You know, and that's a great idea. If you have a kid or a, a, a friend, a nephew, whatever, in sports or theater, what a great way to kind of upcycle those, those shirts. Definitely. Get them out of the drawers. We even do um, like shirt wall art. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You stretch it around a canvas, staple it in the back. And that's really fun. And we use our fist for staple gun for that one. We did, we use our fist for staple gun. Um, I was gonna say, I'm kind of doing this quickly, but I don't mind. I don't need this to look perfect. You know, something that's really important about Hispanic Heritage Month is kind of learning more about your own culture and being Cuban, I've never been to Cuba. My parents left 
when they were pretty young and they have no interest in going back, understandably, just the climate there. But we do have a lot of family there, but it, it is a place that I don't feel like I truly know because I've never been there. But when I was doing research and looking up Cuban art, a lot of it looks very like folk art mm -hmm. and it doesn't look perfect. And that's a part of the charm. So I'm not trying to make this a perfect replica of a cafetera or it doesn't need to be perfect the way this is going to be stamped, stamps in general. Also don't lend themselves to being perfect. So I'm really, I really do love this craft. And I think it's a perfect way to honor my culture specifically, but also this is great for anything. You could do this for Halloween, do some ghosts. You could uh, do this all year round. I mean, really you could take this technique and do it for really anything. Yeah, and of course you can do, you know, it's kind of like a potato stamp. Yes, like old yeah, school yeah, yeah. potato an stamp. Old and you could do, um, you know, uh, cloth napkins or towels. Oh my gosh. Uh, you yeah. know, it's the same deal, same deal. That's really cute, actually. This would be really cute on like a little, on like a kitchen uh, towel. Yeah. All right. I read his mind. You read my mind. I always want a kitchen towel for everything. Okay, so now we're going to use the detailed knife, the craft knife, to cut out our shape. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is follow the line and cut right on the line to get the best um, the best stamp at the end. On the line. On the line. Cut on the line, work your body on time. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'm using my craft blade here, just kind of cutting around the line like Andrew told me to do. Mm -hmm. And you can use this craft blade on a lot of different materials. We've used it on balsa wood. Mm -hmm. We've used it on a uh, cardstock. Card card card. card. I'm trying to keep my hand nice and steady, even though I feel a little shaky from that dirty chai I had. That's Dennis's all time That's my drink. I was going to say it's your fall drink, but it's really just your go-to drink. I always, if I'm in a mood, <laughs> I'm getting a dirty chai, honey. Oh no, were you in a mood today? Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm still in a mood. I think there's something in the air though, today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think there is something in the air. And one tip that we always like to use uh, when we say like to cut things, don't, don't try to force your hand to turn and twist and stuff. Turn the paper. I know it seems like a easy uh, tip, but a lot of times people are like, ah, ah, and we're like, yeah. why are you doing that to yourself? Did I do that part already? What snacks, uh, what snacks slash treats, I think it said, uh, do you like with your coffee? You know, I always like a pase de guayaba. That Ooh. is like a guava pastry. Um, but I will, or like just like a really basic like Maria cookie, which is just like kind of like a, I guess kind of like a graham cracker, something similar to that. I like that. Or sometimes I don't really have anything. I just feel like the coffee is so flavorful as is. That's it. Just some some sugar for a Cuban coffee. I was gonna say a bagel. Oh yeah, a my bagel. morning coffee. I need a bagel. And I'm just gonna punch this out now that I cut it out. See, so really easy. Be careful mm. around the uh, you know delicate pieces and parts. But look um, how well that cut. I didn't even go over my cuts. I was gonna say we love the craft blade. That looks really cute. That looks it's great. a little rough here, but that's okay. I you can, can clean, it up. clean it up. Okay, you're gonna get me? Sure, sure, sure. Um, try dunking ginger snaps into your coffee. That sounds mm. delicious. So I'm kind of glad we're both doing this because Dennis and I cut things very differently. I'm going to do this method where I kind of kind of cut away my extra scraps as I go. Dennis did it so oh, well, I just see. doing like right. And of course, Andrew is working on the small cutting mat, which will be part of our giveaway today. We're going to do the giveaway at the end of the class. We ask you to send your answers. What we do is we do a question, and then we ask you to send your answers uh, via uh, Instagram, yep, DM, or email us, craftylumberjacks at gmail.com. Uh, usually we say, okay, got it, you're entered, and then you'll only hear from us if you win. And we'll, uh, you know, ask for your address and then Tia will help uh, get the product to you.
Christine has a Cuban coffee cookie cutter. Ooh, that's cute. Anita mentioned that this is great for initial stampers. Love that. Yes, very true. You know, and this is a great activity for the kids. If you have like a rainy day or, you know, snow day, maybe soon, oh my um, you know, kind of go through your trash, give them something to do, have them cut out a little stamp and make something. They can yes. make cards uh, or little prints or whatever. So I was, when I was thinking about this project, sorry, I just wanted to share a little bit more. I, I have a lot of memories from going to visit my relatives and then we would do something called visitas, which is just like all the relatives come over or you kind of go to each house and visit your relatives. And of course you would have a, a coffee, you know, it comes like in a little espresso cup. So it's not like a huge cup, but it is very strong, very flavorful. So at the end of like a day, you could have like four espressos and you're like wired after all these visitas. But that's what I think of. I always think of my abuela, my abuelo, when I think of this. So it's just a nice way to honor them and to remember where they came from and what they taught me. Because I think really no matter what um, heritage you come from, we pass on everything with our traditions. So that's, this is a tradition. It's, you know, the afternoon coffee that you drink every single day, especially when you have people over. All right, and I'm just taking my bone folder and I'm just going over a little areas, just making sure that everything is nice and indented because we really do want these pieces to pop. How are you doing, Dennis? Great. A little sweaty. <laughs> a little it's getting hot in here. It is. Looks like October, feels like July. <laughs> all right so there is my piece amazing so we have our two stamps ready to go so we are going to need a backing so for the backing you can either use a piece of styrofoam or we like to upcycle a piece of cardboard here and that's going to be our backing we're going to glue on our styrofoam with a low temp glue gun it's very important that you use a low temp glue gun because if it's too hot it's going to burn your styrofoam stamp and that's no good. Yes, that's true. A high temp is not gonna give you what you're looking for. We don't need a ton, but we just wanna make sure these edges are pretty glued down. And then I'm gonna press it right onto the styrofoam. We don't need a lot of styrofoam. In fact, we really don't want a lot of styrofoam. So I'm just gonna push it right to the edge. And then I'm going to cut it off using the detailed knife, the craft blade. As you can see, it cuts just right through this cardboard. And I'm actually gonna go around mine. I think this just helps when you're placing the stamp to have a better idea of where the stamp is. It doesn't have to be perfect. And what the backing does is it's gonna allow you to press the stamp without breaking the styrofoam. Okay. But if you cannot find cardboard anywhere, you could always use like just more styrofoam if you have it, you know? It could be backed on that. I think that would be fine. But having a nice hard surface is good. So wow, mine. looks great. All okay. right, Dennis. Okay. Uh, I gave you my cardboard. Rookie I mean, mistake. I think they all get it. I think they all get it. But... I think so, but we'll just kind of finish this one. Yes, yes. Oh gosh. The pressure's on, I wasn't expecting this. And did you do it like really close to your edges? Cause you want it glued down really yeah, well, right? You don't have to go too, you don't have to go too crazy close to the edge. It really is fine. It will be okay. It will be stuck. Now, if you're wondering what is a low temp glue gun? A lot of bigger glue guns have a low setting and a high setting. But if you're a little confused, the little glue guns like we just used are low temp. Yeah. And by low cool. temp, we mean low temperature. <laughs> <laughs> just making just sure everybody case, knows. Just everybody case. Knows, I think know? they know. We have some fellow crafters of in the house today. Thank you all for being here again. We do these classes every month. I mean, Michael's has classes every day, literally every hour, it seems. Uh, but we do them once a month. We're going to do a fun Halloween class next month on October 8th. We're turning a pumpkin into a vintage pumpkin trick or treat pail or decoration. And then uh, we're doing a card making class in November. Yes, which we're really excited about. Yes, we actually started working on that already. 
And then, uh, of course, we'll be around for the holidays. And we'll uh, be doing, doing some classes for the holidays. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say we're going to be doing like some gift wrap ideas. Yes. I just love this. It's something, you know, I feel like, I don't know, the days have been longer and longer and I'm always looking for something to do. And we've even jumped onto these classes just to watch our friends or if we're curious about something. And it's just fun to kind of put them on in the background. I'm always interested. I even if you're not crafting along, you know. Yeah. People always come up with such creative things. Like, why not watch? Okay, that was stressful for me. Oh, it's always stressful on camera. <laughs> I know. Oh, like, ah! Now, let me just clarify. You do not need two stamps for this project. We were just oh, doing yeah, that we're because there's two this. of us. And I mean, these kind of look like gingerbread cookies. How cute are these? <laughs> they are cute. <laughs> okay, so shall we move on to the next step? We shall. I think everyone guesses what the next step is. It's time to paint. So let's just take a second to clean our workspace here you know when we do these classes we start off really clean and then oh gosh it just gets messy but i just feel like there's something about you know working in a messy space that just invokes creativity well then our here. space is the most creative out of all because our space is always messy <laughs> Yes, there's a lot of stuff everywhere. So uh, what this is, actually, we should have used it with the glue gun. What this is, is a, a silicone mat. A silicone mat. And what's really great about a silicone mat is that it's heat resistant. It's uh, If you're using glue, you can peel the glue right off. Yeah, so we've actually made, I don't know if you've seen this trend, but like little mushrooms oh my gosh, with a hot glue. So, so you can make it right here and it peels cute. right off. And also this is easy to clean with soap and water. So you can use this for any of your paint projects, which you'll be using today. And this the silicone mat is part of our giveaway as well. Wow, wow, we wow. Wow, wow, we wow. Okay, we we are using a piece of styrofoam for our well, thing. We have all this just, styrofoam. Know. That's okay. Let's just use okay. it for this. And now we're going to be using two colors here. We chose a, a a turquoise and a pink here. Remember, we're going for a. We want um, really nice, vibrant colors. Dennis talked about a pop print. Yeah. So I when you're about... working with that, uh, we're going to start with our lighter color, mm -hmm. which would be the pink. I think the pink is like okay. is a little bit lighter. It really does. I mean, you can do whatever you want. We find it. You know, use the lighter color and then print on top. And actually, this is going to be very similar to block printing. If you've ever done that before, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little paint on our our, our tray here, and we're going to be applying um, the paint with a roller. We're using a foam roller. You can use a brayer if you have one, or even a paintbrush. I really find that the foam roller really works well with the styrofoam. It applies the paint. We got this at the uh, paintbrush section of Michael's. Do you need a little extra room? Uh, yeah. Here we go. I just think it applies the paint really nicely. And now we're putting this in a frame. So we're using a piece of poster board here that I already cut down to the size of the frame. And that's what we're going to be making our image on here. And actually, before I work on my real thing, I want to do a test print. Yes. <clears throat> and actually, it's. I think it's better if you um, cut the... Cut your uh, cut your poster board down after you print a little bit, just because then you can kind of get the the, the like you can center it a little better. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> uh, I'll explain it after. I'll explain it. After. I have no idea what you're talking about, bro. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna apply okay. the paint. Okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll, get this paint all over my roller <laughs> here. Go different directions, you know, however you want to get it on. And this is going to be my test print. Let me just make sure. Can I use the bone folder? Yes. That these are really indented. Sure, sure. Yeah. Let me just go back. Because the deeper your indents are, the better your sample look. For sure. And here is. Oh, God, I messed that one up. That's, that's okay. okay. Eh. Eh. I'm telling you, I'm wearing glasses. I usually don't wear glasses, but my eyes have been so bad lately just from all my screen time. And I got these glasses like four years ago. They're like, you gotta use these glasses when you use your phone. And I was like, yeah, okay. And for the last like seven days, I've been having horrible headaches. So I was like, I guess I gotta wear my glasses. But now we're gonna have two crafty lumberjacks with glasses, I guess. Cool story. Yeah, man. Okay. Right. 
<laughs> so now we're gonna add the paint to our stamp here and just make sure that it's completely covered. Roll it on, roll it on. And I'm doing this over the silicone, silicone, silicone mat. Again, uh, all the paint uh, washes right off with water. So you don't have to be worried about messing up your yeah. mat. And I'm gonna do a test print here. So that looks pretty good. We've already been kind of workshopping and trying this project. So you turn it and then you just press it like a little stamp. You do wanna apply uh, moderate to heavy pressure. And that's what's great about adding the, um, the cardboard because the cardboard, you can really press it down. Yep. And then let's see what we're working with. So this is my test print. So if it doesn't come out good, you can always adjust, use your bone folder or a pencil to get in those creases if you need. I'm having, I feel good about this though. Okay. This is the fun we're part, the big reveal, the come big on. reveal. Oh God, don't let me down. <gasps> oh my God. You saw it live here, folks. That looks really It looks pretty really good. good. I love that. Now, if you wanted to correct little things like this, I don't think you need to because I really like that aspect of it. Again, we're not looking for perfection, but like Dennis said, you can take your bone folder. I would wash this like with a wet paper towel and then just kind of um, re, I don't know, reapply with your bone folder or like yes. press down with your bone folder. Do you want to try yours? Oh, and let's say, okay. okay. And then you could vote who has the better stamp. Oh my gosh. Well, I and felt very rushed. Be me. I felt very rushed. You did? Yeah. Don't do this here. <laughs> okay. So. Wait. Oops. Okay. Whoopsie. Here, let me get you a little more paint. That's great. Okay. So I'm just making sure everything is applied. Let's see, that looks pretty good. I'm not worried about bubbles. That's just because this is a foam roller. Yeah, so you get a lot of air bubbles. When These you were the already foam. here. I want everyone to But I kind of like, that. I feel like this is a, a result of the bubbles and I kind of like that. It gives yes. it a little more texture, a little more depth. Okay, so I'm gonna press down, really get my edges. Carol asked, where did you get that little roller? We got that at Michael's. They have a wide variety of different paint brushes and rollers, uh, foam brushes. And I think this, what's the matter? I'm feeling nervous about Oh, this. okay, wait, Andrew wants I'm all eyes nervous. on him. No, I'm just, I'm just worried that mine's not gonna be as good. And this is very important for me to be better. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, okay, okay. Cute, cute. I think I like yours better. Yeah, I think mine well, is like a little. Of course. <laughs> okay, so okay, calm Andrew. down. Dennis, check plus. Okay. <laughs> well, weren't we going to have people vote in? I don't know. They both look wonderful, really. Yes, they look great. Okay, so now we're going to start creating our print here. So like we said, we are using a piece of poster board, which we got at Michael's as well. We get all our materials from Michael's. And, you know, Dennis talked about turning this into art, and that's something we love to do. We do live in a very small apartment in Queens, New York, and a way to keep your space looking fresh is by changing out the artwork. So a lot of times we'll buy frames from Michael's, and then we will use poster board, create art on that, and then swap it out seasonally. So we will change it up every few months just to keep everything nice and fresh. And I think that is a real great way uh, just to keep your space really fresh without having to change too much. It's it's kind of like that classic rule, like change out the throw pillows on your couch. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is another easy alternative. So we're gonna start here and I'm gonna start a little off my, uh, or no, I'm gonna do it right on the thing, right? You do you. So just gonna line it up on my print here and press, press, press. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating a repeating pattern. You know, and because we're doing like a double layer, you don't have to worry too much about the first uh, thing. And actually you don't have to worry too much about each individual look because once you kind of have it all on there, it's all gonna look, um, 
It's all going to come together. Yeah, yeah. It's You're like it won't notice. be. You won't be like, oh, this one has the lip missing or anything. It's like people don't notice that. You won't notice it once it all comes together. You know, we have other things to worry about. <laughs> uh, okay, someone asked, how do you wash these stamps? I would say the best way to do is to take a wet paper towel and wipe off the um, stamp surface, not the cardboard, just the styrofoam. And that's gonna really get a lot of that paint off. We actually have a styrofoam stamp. Oh, it's not on our table, but we've had it for years and it still works really, really well. And I'm just eyeballing this baby. I'm gonna do like a repeating pattern. Oh, very nice. And I am applying new paint each time. You don't need a lot of paint. You see that even see, feels like too much. That looks like way too much paint. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just I'm kidding. Like, I'm just this kidding. took a turn. No, that, I mean, it still looks great. I do like it when there's like a little less because then it kind of gives this like... Like shoddy. I was gonna say like, like vintage vibe almost. Yes. So if you remember, 30 minutes ago when I brought up, if you don't have styrofoam, you could use a craft foam. Oh yes, craft foam. What, what you could do instead is draw on your craft foam and then cut out each individual piece. Because if you use the bone folder on the craft foam, the craft foam is kind of self-healing self as well, where it will like rise back up to its original original surface yeah so if you're not going to get these lines so what you can do is take an image and then cut out each piece and then glue it onto the cardboard so like the, this would be like three bottom pieces like one two three four five six seven and you would just glue it into place and do it like that does that make sense when i say that out loud yes i i'm i'm thinking about my own stuff here though so i don't really know what you're talking about that's okay. but i just i i should have done it like differently but you know you kind of get it you live, you learn. And I'm just stamping. So I want it a repeating pattern. I don't want to do it straight across. So I'm just doing it like eyeballing it in the middle of where I just set my first couple of stamps. So I'm making another row. <gasps> wow. I mean, you are seeing this come to life right here in front of your very eyes. Christina asks, can you use an ink pad with this? I think you totally could use an ink pad with this. I think it would work very well. And again, you can use any image you want for this. That's why I kind of like this project. You're welcome. What do you mean? I was just responding oh. to the comment. Yes, you could use any image with this. Remember, if you are going to choose an image, keep it more simple. Don't uh, go with something so detailed because you probably just won't see those details with this stamping. If you want to do a really detailed stamp, Michaels does sell like um, a kit with a rubber um, Oh yeah, you carve away the rubber, like a the sand rubber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna kind of keep going, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. That's good. It's looking really great. Thank you so much. You're welcome so we much. We kind of planned this that Andrew was gonna do kind of the laboring. <laughs> or kind of like this, and I, I was going to hold the camera. I don't remember that. <laughs> but we, I guess somehow I, you know, I've been called a control freak before. And I guess that you saw it here. And I that was by our cat. <laughs> I started to take over. <laughs> it happens, you know. Make a book. I love that. Oh my gosh. Or now back to school. Like how cute would this be to make, have like your kids do their own back to school, like Book covers. Oh my gosh. That'd be really so fun. Now for these spots here, I'm actually gonna do it like off the edge of my like poster board. Too? Yes, I'm not gonna right. do it here. We'll no, that's what I was gonna say. It. I think you should cut it down for a smaller frame than you're thinking. Yes, and ooh, that one. Good girl. It's always the last few. <laughs> I know. That's when you really start to get into the rhythm. Okay, for so for these ones, oh, I guess I'm gonna have to do paint on the bottom. I'll kind of switch it up. So I'm gonna just do it off the thing on the mat here, just off so it goes off the edge. Okay. 
Same thing with the top piece here. And again, the silicone mat, uh, you can wash with soap and water. So I don't worry, you know, it's great to protect your work surface. And if you get a little paint on there, you don't have to worry too much about it. <gasps> wow, Dennis, so cute. that looks really great. So now should I rinse this off and use the same Yeah. Stamp? Okay. I think so. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a fanning technique. Just kidding, this isn't like a real thing, but I am gonna just fan this because you do want to make sure that the uh, paint is fully dry before you add your next color. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of dab off any excess paint here, just so, on a paper towel. Great. Wow, even that looks cool. And then I'm just gonna wipe it with a little damp paper towel here just to get off any excess paint because I'm gonna reuse the stamp to add a second color. Is this how you would do it? That's exactly how I would do it. Tia just put the link for the silicone mat. Oh, awesome. And you can find all of these you know, online. Michaels, they have a great online site. Um, you can deliver, get stuff and have it, uh, you know, made for you in the store to that. pick up or you can get it delivered, of course. That looks great. I also think if there's like a little pink in a few of them, I really don't think that's an okay. issue. And what's great too, the foam rollers are really easy to clean, just run them under the sink. Oh my gosh, you can use it for years and years, really great. Okay. That looks good. Should I clean up my mat a little? All right. Okay, so we're just gonna add some of this teal paint. Again, we're doing almost like a pop print, almost like a 3D look. I also chose these colors because uh, the Cuban flag is red and blue. So this is just like a little take on that. Use a little water. Yeah, same deal, same deal. But now we're gonna kind of um, make it look like 3D almost. Do you think I should do a test one with this or you think it's good? Uh, why not do a test one? I think if you're asking yourself, should I do a test one? It's probably best to just do a test. I like that. Trust your instincts. Trust your instincts. Trust your gut. I was going to do it on that one so I could show. How oh, it. okay. I like okay, that. for this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we want a little uh, depth, dimension, I guess. A little pop. A little pop. So I'm going to do it kind of uh, just a little to the side and above, like there. Ooh, yeah. Going to look 3D. Andrew keeps acting to a camera that's not, that no one can see, what? except for Deja, maybe. <laughs> if you haven't been watching, then you've missed half the story. I will say that. Ooh, cute. Cute. So now, I can kind of readjust now I see, maybe I would do it closer to the handle. Great. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Very cool. No matter how you do it, I think it looks really cool. I'm gonna take my print here. Would I say closer? Yeah, closer to the handle. So like there. Yeah. I will say this is pretty nerve wracking to do on camera and I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I know, I was gonna say, <laughs> why is it nerve wracking for you, bro? <laughs> Use a little water, wallpaper on your desktop or phone case, yes. Oh, that'd be so cute. Oh my gosh, that looks great. Look so at that. cute. So really just adds, this really just takes it over the top. I mean, this is really beautiful as is, just the pink or even like black would be really nice, but doing this um, extra color really does just take it to the next level. Thinking it kind of looks like a little black and blue. And again, that's why it's, best if you cut out the cardboard close to the stamp because then you have a better like visual of where you're stamping it. Would you yes. agree with that? Thank you. <gasps> Very nice. 
And we're just gonna keep on keeping on, keep layering. Again, if you miss anything in today's class that you wanna revisit, it will be posted on Michael's YouTube channel or we always have our blog posts with the full tutorial on that you can revisit. And if you make something like this or you wanna share, use the hashtag make it with Michael so that we can see. I keep forgetting like where I, <laughs> where I put it. <laughs> I'm like, well, where am I putting it? And if any of you have questions about this craft or any other crafts we make about us, Michael's, about product at Fiskars, they always have some fancy little gadgets. Uh, you know, let us know in a comment. We're here for you. And if there's something you want to um, share with us, it doesn't have to be about crafting, it can be about your own culture, Hispanic Heritage Month, anything like that, you can share. We're on for another 14 minutes, minutes 10, oh 14 minutes. Somewhere right, I'm working on. fast. I'm working You're doing fast. great. You don't need to rush. Do you like these colors? Any suggestions? Do you like the double stamp technique? Uh, you're not feeling it. You are feeling it. We want to know. Talk to me. It looks really cool. It looks really great on camera and in person. I, I guess it doesn't matter how it looks in person, as long as it looks good on camera. <laughs> well, Isn't that the, the social it? media world we live in? <laughs> This would really be a, a, a very elaborate, but really nice wrapping paper. Oh, yes. I love that. This is really nice. Thanks for sharing. Love the dimensional look. Yes. It really jazzes it up. Oh, so I nice. love that. We got Elijah Minnelli here. It looks great. Thank you. Oh, you know, it'd be really great if you're if you're thinking about doing like a present, you could wrap it in brown paper. And then if it's like a nice flat surface, just add one stamp or do like oh, a yes, corner like with a stamp. Corner. Like you don't have to do everything. I always love something with a little corner festive flourish. A festive flourish is really in nice. a corner. I was just thinking, even though we're like, let us know if you like it. Like, can you imagine if somebody was like, I don't like that at all. <laughs> They're like, that's hideous. You're like, oh. That's okay. You don't have to like everything everybody makes. Right, you just have to like everything we make. <laughs> there you, <laughs> there go. you go. Yeah, yeah. Do you need more paint? Uh, no, I'm kind of digging this kind of light. Okay, I'm into it too. That's what's great about these foam rollers too. It may seem like you're using a lot of paint, but a little goes a long way with these foam rollers. Okay, okay. Am I getting sloppier and sloppier? No, not really. No, it looks really great. It really does look like 3D. And of course, you're going to want to stay around for our giveaway at the end of the class. We're going to ask a question, oh and then you have to send us your answer uh, via DM on our Instagram, Crafty Lumberjacks at Instagram, <laughs> or um, uh, you can email us your answer at craftylumberjacks.com. And again, it's only no, Crafty Lumberjacks at gmail. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, it's only open to people in uh, the U.S. and to Canada, uh, but of course. Um, you know, we love to hear from you and you don't have to worry. Um, you're not signing up to anything. It just goes to us. It doesn't go to anybody else. That's right. And we will contact you if you won. Yes. And again, win. the giveaway is only open for people joining us today during the live class. All right. And again, we're going up. to make sure the silicone mat is there to protect our table. And the silicone mat will wash off really, really easily, which is great. We've used this so many times. It looks brand new. Thank you, Deja. Just shared our Instagram handle and our email. Oh, wow. This one up a little. Right? Because that's yeah. kind of how it would go. So oh my cute. gosh, that looks really, really great. I love it. And we also did like a little card earlier. <clears throat> yep. So we yeah. just, we did a little card and we just embellished it with a little pen. 
you, you see these little details? They're so like easy. It's just like to take it over the top, just because I didn't want to do two stamps. Yes, I'm going to go wash my hands quickly. All right, so we don't have a frame now, but what I would do if I did have a frame, I would take the frame, I'm going to use this as a prop, and I would line it up to where I want it. This is why I was saying don't cut it out. Don't pre-cut it first. Do the stamping and then cut after this way. Let's see if I want it like right. I don't know. Let's see. Where do I want it? I think I want it like right here. This way, you can choose where you want it. You can pick your best stamp and center it that way. Take the frame. Then I would uh, take a little pencil, trace it, use your craft knife, your detail knife, and then cut around and pop it right into the frame. Make a handful of these. Change it out seasonally. Come on. Really, really great. Great job work. Great job work, Dennis. Great work, Dennis. Good job. Words are hard. <laughs> Deja, I guess you can swap out the cam so we're back on. So you can see our faces. Oh my gosh. Hi. Hello. Um, okay, okay, so that's it. So you can make your own DIY stamp out of trash, essentially. Um, and it looks really great, really cool. We have another one here that I can show you that we actually had sized correctly. Looks great. I mean, that looks really cool. It really does give like- Oh my God, really it nice is like- 3D, like- wow. Imagine if we had 3D glasses you put on and really is 3D. Oh my gosh. What? Interactive art. I need that. Um, okay, so I guess it's almost time for us to end. If you have any questions and they're not answered in this class, you can always write us on Instagram or just reach out to us. So the giveaway, you are getting the silicone mat that we the just used. Mat which is great. You're getting this small cutting mat, which is so handy. You are getting a um, detailed craft blade from yes. Fiskars. Really easy to change. They have different blades and all of that jazz. You're also going home with a pair of OG Fiskars scissors. You know it's them because they have the orange handles. And the bone folder, which is so useful. Really, really great. Okay, so should I give the question? Yes. You know, the question really doesn't matter. It really isn't a question. Sometimes I'll just Google something. This one, you probably won't even have to Google the answer because you might know it already. If you don't, you can Google it or search it however you want. And then send us your answers to be yes. entered in the giveaway. Then if you win, we'll reach out, get your address, and we'll pass it along. Okay, so we're gonna keep this really easy. The question for the giveaway is, what is the capital of Cuba? What's Cuba's capital? <laughs> yeah, so uh, send us your answers. Thank you so much for joining us today. Come to our next class. We're going to be making this adorable little vintage pumpkin. Yes, I today was so fun. Today was so fun. Oh, uh, and I, uh, follow us. Follow Michael's. <laughs> tag Michael's. Tag Fiskars. And we hope to see you soon. I was going to say this oh. is Deja's last class. You are so wonderful, Deja. You're doing all the back end stuff. Thank you so much. She's going off to school. Thank you for everything. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Yes, and, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Adios.